Hello once again to all my fellow Fix-It employees out there. Welcome back to another exciting episode of How to Satisfactory, a series where I am teaching you, the beginning Satisfactory player, how to play the game through tips, tricks, uh, basically tutorials, walk through everything you need to basically just get going in the game. So, I want to begin this video by saying a huge apology for the extended absence away from being making uh, from making these videos, essentially. And uh, I hope you guys have stuck around, and I know some of you have been patiently waiting for the next episode. Some of you may have thought that I may be going into steel production in this episode, and I hate to disappoint you, but we will not be doing that. We will be getting ready to start that though for the next episode but there's a few things that i've kind of not really solved yet or gone over that i want to go through today in this episode before we start still production now that we actually have co-production we don't have to worry constantly about filling up um, the biomass generators and worrying about any of that now is a good time to actually kind of sit and go through a few other things that we need to do Plus, it gives me a chance to kind of get back into the habit of making videos. Where I was gone for so long, it's just, uh, it's taken me a little bit to kind of just get the, the gumption to, to make another video. To, to get the get up and go, so to speak. But, I am back, and we are going to continue. So, uh, first of all, I do also want to say that I highly recommend to everyone out there who has been playing along with this walkthrough. Like, if you've been using this as a guide and playing through and trying to do everything exactly the same way I do it, I highly recommend that you do a different save game because in this game you can have multiple saves so you can start an entirely new game and you know basically try the game out on your own, experiment, uh, play the game in different ways, just, just play around with it essentially. Um, take the things that I have taught you, go into a different save game and use those in your own ways and, and just Play and experiment and uh, and learn new things on your own. Highly recommend that. It's a great way to kind of still learn the game, but you can also still keep up with these videos that I make as well. All right, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started today. So, as I said, we need to get ready for steel production. But before we can do that, there's a few things that we still need to grab that I think are going to be extremely useful. For one, uh, just to get into the advanced steel production, we, you know, like once we start doing these and stuff, we're going to need these uh, heavy modular frames, um, or we can make those, but we're going to need modular frames before we can even do anything with that anyway, so, yeah. Um, what I recommend, actually, right now, is let's go ahead and get into improved melee combat. So, this is going to give us the Xeno Basher, which is much better than the Xeno Zapper. It's going to give us one more hand slot, and it's going to give us some inventory slots. Now, in order to get this, you're going to need some rotors, which we should have plenty of by this point. Uh, we're going to need some reinforced iron plates, we're going to need some wire, and we're going to need some cables. So, let's head up to our, all of our inventory storage area there and grab everything that we're going to need there. Alright, so I pretty much just grabbed a stack of uh, everything we would need, and I think that should do us for what we need to unlock this. So once again, it's under Tier 4 here, Improved Melee Combat. Now we have everything we need, so let's select that as the milestone, and let's just hold down Control and start clicking the things that we need to put them in there. There we go. And once again, we're going to push the big red button. Alright, so now that we have access to the Xeno Basher, we're going to go ahead and make it. Let's head over here to our equipment workshop real quick. Now, in order to make the Xeno Basher, we are going to need an extra Xeno Zapper. So let's go ahead and make one more of those. There we go. Then we're going to go into our inventory and we're going to take the Xeno Basher out of our hand and put it into our inventory slot. Now we have two in our inventory. We can go down here to Xeno Basher. And uh, it looks like the only thing we're missing is regular modular frames, which we aren't actually making, and that's one of the things we're going to get started doing today. So let's head over here, and we're just going to make, uh, we only need a few of these. It looks like we can make like 40 of them, so I'll make uh, 10, and 10's fine. All right, and once you have your heavy modular frames and everything else you're going to need, head back over here, and let's craft the Xeno Basher. All right, and next, of course, is equipping the Xeno Basher. So once you do that, you get this awesome animation here as your satisfactory employee kind of checks it out, and then he unlocks it. It's even got a cool little dangling wrench right there. So nice little kind of touch right there. 
Now what this does is pretty much, I'm I'm not sure exactly the amount of damage that it does, but I, I'm just going to say it probably does at least twice the amount of damage. Because with the Xeno Zapper, it takes four hits to kill one of the chargers, uh, the bulls. Uh, with this thing, you only need two hits. It will also definitely take out one of the uh, the spitters as well, fairly a lot quicker than what the Xeno Zapper will. This is going to be handy because we're going to go exploring here in a minute and we're going to grab some slugs. All right, and next we're gonna head over here to the MAM, and I would recommend going into, let's see, uh, I would probably say Kateria, no, it's under uh, Mycelia, that's it. So the Medicinal Inhaler. This is definitely something handy to have. Now you're gonna need some Mycelia, which you can find in a cave nearby here, if you don't remember where that's at. It's just uh, kind of to the north of where we're at right now, and right on the edge of the cliff. All right, you're also going to need some reinforced plates, and you're going to need some rotors. Again, not a problem. We have everything we need now. So we'll research that, which only takes a couple of seconds. All right, now we got that done. And let's head back up here to Alien Organisms, the rebar gun. Now, previously, I had said that the rebar gun, to me, wasn't really worthwhile. Uh, I have been told that the rebar gun can kill a spitter in, like, three hits. I don't remember it doing that. But you know what? We have the parts. Let's go ahead and make one All right, and get that kind of going there. All right, since we are waiting on the rebar gun to research, let's go up here to our second deck up here of construction. And let's go down here to the end. Now, one thing I've debated about is whether or not we should go ahead and move these things closer together or just go ahead and add one to the end. And if we move them closer together, that's going to take a lot more work. But I still would recommend doing so. Like, I would recommend, like, taking our machines out and then putting them, like, one here and then one kind of, like, right here on this square. And then one in the middle and then one in the square. I would recommend doing that when you have some free time. That way we can kind of uh, get some extra space in here. And maybe if we need more machines, we can totally do that. Just pretty much just compacting things together a little bit but right now we are not going to do that uh, like I said we can do that later on we're going to just go ahead and come on over here and we're going to add another assembler right here and make sure it all lines up there we go and you're probably thinking well what what are we gonna do with this assembler alright well remember how I said we need to get some modular frames going well, that's what we need to do. Now, modular frames are going to need a couple of things. They're going to need reinforced plates, and they're going to need some iron rods. Right now, most of our iron rods are going into production of other things. And reinforced plates, we're not really making enough that we're going to be able to make modular frames and the other stuff down here either. So we technically, we aren't making smart plates, but we should probably get the smart plates going back up again in production because we are going to need about 500 of those, among other things. All right, once you have your assembler placed on this side, let's go ahead and grab a copy of it and place another one here on the opposite side over here. There we go. And our MAM research is complete now, so we will go over there in just a moment and grab that. But what we're going to do before we head over that way is let's go over here to the other side. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab our conveyor lifts. We're going to place one here and we're going to push it down so it's underneath here. Same as all the other machines we've done. We want this one to be inward towards the inside. So if you look right there, you can kind of see the yellow arrows underneath there, which way it's facing. So we're just going to kind of drop that down to there. And this one, we are going to do that same thing, except we're going to opposite direction this one. So it's going to be coming from the outside into the machine. So just like that. All right, now let's head down to the MAM real quick. All right, so now that we have the rebar gun researched, we also need to research the ammo. So back up here into alien organisms, and right underneath the rebar gun, you'll see spiked rebars. This is the ammo that the rebar gun uses. Now, if you are a fan of Satisfactory and you watch Coffee Stain or you watch other like YouTubers and stuff, you will know that there is update six coming soon. Update 6 is going to change a few things, mostly with exploration. Uh, we may end up getting a new enemy type. We don't really know a whole lot about that just yet. Uh, the entire Spire Coast is changing. If you are following along with me here in the plains, that's not going to concern you just yet. 
and uh, some other things like map and lots of stuff. Beacons, I've taught you about beacons. Well, beacons aren't even going to be really a thing anymore. But we don't have to worry about it because any beacons we have placed are going to turn into markers on the map. So that's a good thing. All right, so let's go ahead and just grab spike rebars, research that. That only takes a couple of seconds, and that's the ammo for that. There we go. And that's pretty much everything that we're going to research in the MAM for the moment. Now, let's head down here to the underfloor where things are coming in to our machines on the second construction floor there. And we're going to go right down here. Now, the first thing we are going to do is we are going to take out the conveyor belt line right here that is bringing in the iron rods because we are going to change this up just a little bit. So, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and grab a splitter. We're going to put that splitter right there in front of the conveyor lift right there. Alright, and uh, what we're going to do at that point is go ahead and take out the conveyor lift because it's no longer connected. So we're going to take that out. And let's just take the floor out right above us too here so we can work. And grab a copy of... The conveyor lift bring it down now you will notice that if once you bring it down from the top like so and then connect into that you will hear it kind of click and that means that it is connecting there without the actual like uh, suction cup thingy i don't know exactly what you would call this but instead of having this here it just connects straight up into our splitter right here all right now with that there we are going to then extend a line on down through here and what we're going to do is come to right about, um, let's do, you know what, let's do to here. And then we'll do three more up and then just kind of push it up to there and then run it down here. This isn't really important how you actually do this uh, as long as it, you just kind of do it. So then we're going to run that across and back down. And I like to do three. All right. And then we're going to run this down through here. Now, where this is going to run to is all the way down here into that machine there. So I don't know if that's going to work or not. Let's see. Mm, yes, actually, that went perfectly right into that. So let's go ahead and delete these four pieces here. If you happen to have any right there, we can just get rid of those and copy underneath of here. There we go. If you get anything left behind, you can totally just grab that right there. All right, so now this is going to be rods being split and going into the machine down there, cutting over top of our plates, going down through here and into this machine down here. Don't forget to connect your rods back up to your splitter here, like so. All right, now there we go. But again, we're still not making enough rods for exactly everything we're going to need. Now let's go over here to the other side where our screws are. If we can get down underneath here. There we go. And we're going to run up through here. All right, so we're going to come up here to where the other conveyor belt uh, lift here is. And we are going to grab a floor piece and we're going to set it right there. Now, we need some reinforced plates going kind of split between this machine and that machine. Now, currently, I have reinforced plates coming in on this side. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take these out right here. And I'm going to take this out as well. Now let's go ahead and grab a splitter. And we're going to put it right in front of this conveyor lift right here. Making sure that you get the arrows facing the right way. Like so. And then connect that up to that. And connect that into that. Alright. And then what we're going to do is we're going to connect this right that way. So if we bring this over through here. Let's see that. Right there there is our intersection so if we come back by two there we go connect into that all right now what this is going to do is it's going to split the reinforced plates that we're going to bring from this side now down into here all right with that done let's head back up top here now you might remember that we actually cut off all the uh, rotors here from being pushed in but we're going to actually change this now we're going to say send reinforced plates going this way like so and then to the left put none and the center is going to be overflow all right and now we're just going to come down here to this one here in between these two machines 
This is the one that's set up for reinforced plates, but we're actually going to change that over to rotors now. Like so. And again, make sure this is set to none and overflow on that one. All right. So now rotors are going to go down this way. Reinforced plates are going to go down this way. It's going to get split between this machine and this machine. And this machine is now going to be making modular frames because all we needed was the rods and some iron plates. Once again, we're going to head back down underneath of here and we just need to hook up this line back over here again like that there we go now you'll probably see a few plates kind of coming down through here and it should be fine uh, and if it's not we can just kind of remove these things here or just remove the belt again and that will get rid of them like so and then just reconnect it again all right so now rotors should hit here come down through here and then be pushed into this machine. Last but not least is power, of course. So just go ahead and grab a cable, connect it to that, bring it down this way, and to right about, uh, let's see, if I get right here, I'm thinking probably like right there would be good. So let's put that there, and then let's connect that to the machine. And now it has power. And it should be making some modular frames. So now that we're actually making modular frames, we need to make sure that the modular frames are going into a storage container. And we haven't set that up yet. If you've removed any floor pieces, go ahead and put those back there. And let's head up to our storage container system down here. All right, now here where we're sorting out using the smart splitters and sending things up, if we come to the third one back. So that one is rotors, I believe. This one is smart plates. This one is it says any but nothing's actually going through there let's go ahead and set this one up for modular frames there we go all right so now once we start making modular frames they will start coming down through here they will get sorted and they will go up into our system of storage up there into a box all right now we got all of that sorted out and of course, don't forget to do the exact same thing down here on the other side to set up this machine on the right hand side or left hand side, depending on which way you're facing. One more thing I just happened to notice is that I wasn't actually making any smart plates again. And that's because we actually set this machine to standby mode. So we need to actually go back into the system here and click on power. And then there we go. Now rotors are going in, reinforced plates are going in, and we are making smart plates. So now everything should be working just at a little bit of a slower pace than what we prefer. All right, so now that we have modular frames being made, albeit at a snail's pace, we need to head to down here and let's go ahead and make our rebar gun. So let's go back to the equipment workshop, head down here, and then in the equipment workshop, you will see the rebar gun. It requires six reinforced plates, 16 iron rods, and 108 screws. All of which, again, you should probably pretty much have in your inventory right now. Let's go ahead and make one of these guns here. There we go. And let's go ahead and make some spiked rebar ammo. It basically, it turns iron rods into the spikes that we need to shoot from our rebar gun. So let's go ahead and craft, um, I don't know, let's do like 100 or so, or however many you think you're going to need. Go ahead and make some of those. All right, so now that we have the rebar gun and its ammo constructed, let's go ahead into our inventory and we're going to be equipping that into one of our new hand slots here. There we go. Don't have to equip the ammo. The ammo just stays in your regular inventory. So as you reload, it takes from there. All right, now let's go ahead and plop over to that. Let's see here. Ah, oh, there we go. Yes, nice. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, first thing we're going to do is hit R to reload it. We're going to plop a rebar in there. And uh, as I was saying about update 6 soon, the rebar gun and the other weapons that we will get later in the game are going to have all kinds of different ammo types. The rebar gun is going to get a couple different things, including I think a stun rebar. And uh, I think one that turns it into a shotgun, which is kind of cool. So that's why we're going ahead and making that today. All right, so next on my agenda today is we are going to go hunting slugs because we are going to be doing some overclocking and underclocking and everything else. And we're going to need lots and lots of slugs to do that. Now, 
You could probably just go out here and kind of just start searching. You'll probably come across some. But just to get you going, I'm actually going to show you some locations for some that we haven't actually found yet. It's possible that you may have. So when you go to get the slug, if it's not there, you may have actually already found it. But if you haven't been actually looking for them, then chances are they're still there. Now I'm going to show you a few locations here on where we can find enough slugs for what we need to do next. Now... Being a good Fix-It employee, you must always remember safety first. So depending on what your health is at the moment, you may want to have a few bites of some nuts. Alright, now that you've got your health fully recovered, I think one other thing we could possibly take with us, just in case of emergencies, because you never know what will happen out in the wild, is some of those new medicinal inhalers. In order to make those, you are going to need a few ingredients, one of which is the bacon shrooms. You are also going to need some hellberries you're going to need some mycelia and you need to put your nuts in your hand no not those get your mind out of the gutter the barrel nuts all right let's head over here to our workshop table once again and you should see nutritional inhalers now i have enough to make a couple of these so let's go ahead and do that all right there we go and again that's just in case of emergencies we may not need them but you never know let's go ahead and throw them into our one of our hand slots as well there we go. Alright, at this point I think we have everything we need to head out. So what we're going to do first is head to the south over to these trees right over here. Where we will then be greeted by the local wildlife. If I can find them. Ah, there's one. Alright, first shot with the rebar gun and I have missed. Alright, let's see here. Where's he at? Not sure if I hit him or not. I think that's two on him. Let's see if the third one hits. Oh, I missed that one. Alright, if that was... I don't know if that was two hits or three. But I'm pretty sure it was this one. Alright, so if I hit him with three, which I'm not sure if I did or not, then it does only take three shots with this. I guess this is a little bit easier, though. It takes a little longer. Oh, and now we're being invaded by one of these. You know what? Nah. I'm just going to beat him. There we go. I win. All right, something else I may not have actually talked about yet is these guys right here. You may have noticed them while you're out and about and exploring. Uh, maybe hearing something kind of talking to you and kind of this strange, eerie noise. This is just these uh, Mercer Spears, and there's a few other things as well, some Super Sloops or whatever they are. But anyway, just go ahead and pick these up um, just to get them to stop talking. There's nothing you can do with them at the moment in the game. So, yeah, they're, they're there for later, like once story mode is in, but they don't expect to do that until, like, probably 1.0. So, but for the time being, if you want, just go ahead and grab them just to get rid of them. Alright, so once you've taken care of the two spitters and a charger over here and grabbed the Mercer Spear, if you head over to the southeast over here, you will see our first blue slug right there on top of that rock. So let's head over here, and in order to get to him the easiest way, what we're going to do is we're just going to go into our build menu. We're just going to grab a ramp, and we're going to just kind of put that ramp from there, and make sure you have Zoop on, and come all the way down. And then we're just going to climb right up here, right over top of Bob there. And we're going to grab that power slug. Alright, got him. Alright, and that is our first power slug here. Go ahead and remove these because you're going to want to carry those with you. And, of course, if you jump on top of Bob, you get this really cool kind of trampoline effect. don't know if you guys know this or not, but this is kind of fun. You just got to make sure you don't miss when you're landing on him. Alright, so once you are done jumping around on Bob's back, you can head back over here into this little forest area over here by our hub. And look over to the west towards our Caterium node. And our next blue slug is going to be right there on top of that rock. But there is something here that I haven't actually discussed yet over here. And that is these kind of creatures here. These like uh, plants. So these guys are extremely toxic. Very, very toxic. They basically emit that green gas that can kill you. Uh, so what will happen is once you get kind of close to them, they kind of stand up on their legs and then they just kind of, well, for lack of a better word, they fart. And it, it, it's bad. Like, think of the worst dog fart ever and that's one of these guys. Alright, anyway. Uh, so, 
we are just going to kind of try to get past them so we're not going to get too close but we are going to do the same thing we are going to grab a ramp right here and we're just kind of place it right up there on top of that and then just kind of come down with it and then just make a run for it just basically run past him there's no way to really kill those guys at the moment you can kill them once you get some black powder and start making explosives and stuff but explosives is the only way to kill them a chainsaw won't do it a basher won't do it a rebar gun will not do it only explosives all right, so from here on top of this rock, if you look kind of over towards our Caterium node beacon, you will see a yellow slug right there on the edge. So we're going to head over that way next. So let's just go ahead and kind of jump off of here. Just be careful not to drop too far. Other words, that will hurt you. And kill any of the local wildlife that gets in your way. And then just kind of head right over here. Now, a good way to get to this one is, of course, using flat foundations. Just kind of put it right there on the edge and then just kind of zoop it out over to there. And then let's head over there, and we're just going to walk across. Now, uh, as you kind of get close, you will see appears to be a charger. But if you look closer, this charger is much bigger. This is the mother of all chargers right here. This thing uh, is going to take a few more hits to kill than what you're probably used to. This is a good thing that we actually have our basher here. All right, now I have found the best way to kill this one is to just kind of jump up and try to hit it from above. Uh... Oh, there, there she is. Oh! So as she jumps over you, just try to... Because one of these hits from her will really kill you. Alright. Phew. Alright, so we got rid of her. Alright. But yeah, basically just kind of time the jumps to jump over top of her. And then just kind of hit her from above. That's a good way to get her. If she hits you with one of those charges, though, it can take a lot of health off of you. But good time to use one of our great nutritional inhalers. All right, and we are back to full health. So let's go ahead and grab our yellow slug now. All right, so once you've grabbed your yellow slug, turn around over here facing the south, and you see that kind of rock outcropping there? We're going to head over towards that. I'm going to show you a hidden slug that is a little hard to find in fact it took me a bit to even find this and i knew exactly where it was by looking on the map and i still couldn't find this for a bit but what we're gonna do is we're just kind of gonna jump down here there are some of these guys here so take care of these guys however you wish and once they are disposed of what we're gonna do is we're gonna head right over here now you should see kind of it's kind of like right in this corner if you look down from this rock right there where that tree is kind of look down there should be a node of some sort here Hopefully, it's not uranium, because you do not want to pick at uranium. Trust me on this, it's a bad idea, you're going to have a bad time. But for me, right now, this is copper. Copper is safe, so what we're going to do is we're just going to chip away at the copper. And once you clear that little kind of special ore there, if you look down here, right down in there, oh look, there's a hidden blue slug. Go ahead and grab him. Alright, now let's head back up to where our ramp is right there we built. You're probably, in order to get across through here, going to need to build another ramp. Not a problem. Let's go ahead and do that. And uh, I see two more chargers over there, so we're going to take those guys out too. All right, so next, head over towards your Caterium node and just kind of keep heading west. Just keep going this direction. You're going to pass a couple of iron nodes here. There is a charger here that I've already killed. And just kind of keep heading this way. And you should kind of see this right here. Uh, I think there's some, yeah, some more iron nodes down here. And a couple more chargers down here. Let's drop down and kill these guys. Should be another one right over here. Easy pickings now with the Xeno Basher. Alright, and we are just going to head this direction. And just kind of keep going. And there's kind of a little drop off point right over here. I believe it's over here by the limestone, if I'm not mistaken. And maybe a little further. Ah, okay. So if we kind of keep over here by the edge, right down here, if we drop down here, there should be a slug right down here. There we go. So we'll pick this one up. All right, once we have it, face the waterfalls over here. Again, heading kind of northwest. Go around the corner. And we're going to head up this little path right over here. Which I believe, yep, a couple more chargers. 
Take those guys out and grab anything they leave behind because that is great for other stuff we can use to make. And then just kind of head up here to the north over towards these trees right here. You'll see your next slug right there on that tree. Again, guarded by a couple of chargers. So excuse me while I take care of these guys. All right, so now we're just going to grab this blue slug off of this tree here. There we go. Perfect. All right, and then we're going to head over this way. We're just going to come up here around this corner, and you're going to see your next one right there up on top of that cliff. So we're just going to head up here, and again, we can use the same trick we usually use. We'll just go in here, grab some ramps, and then just kind of build the ramps down like to there. That's perfect. All right, jump up here. There is a spitter up here, so you can kind of take him out too. There we go. I think there's another one right up here on top of the hill, but we're not going to be up here long enough to deal with him. So just go climb up your ramp you've made, grab the blue power slug, and head back down. There we go. All right, and we're going to take that back up there. There we go. All right, and then just kind of continue up this way. Just head straight. And then you're going to kind of come across this kind of like rock outcrop here with some grass and stuff on it. Just climb to the top of this. Just keep going. And right over here on the edge of it, hidden in some grass, is another power slug right here. This one is easy to miss, but he's kind of sitting on the edge of this. But you should be able to find it fairly easy. Just kind of come up this little area up through here, and he's right on here on this edge by a tree, hidden in the grass. All right, so now, from here, we are actually going to head back towards our hub, sort of. We're going to head east. And you should come across your wires going to your coal plant. And right over here is some more iron nodes right there. And there is a blue slug right up on top of that cliff right there. This is uh, kind of north of our hub right there. So right there, you can kind of see our space elevator. So just kind of right over this way. Once again, using the ramp trick, we'll just build some ramps up to him and grab him fairly easy. All right, once you pick him up, we're just going to slide back down our ramp here like that. And then pick up our ramp, just remove it, put it back into our inventory there with the materials. And then we are going to head back towards our home, sort of. We're going to head right, right over top of it, so just kind of go south here. And then right up here on the edge are going to be two chargers, which we are going to take out. And once you remove it, though, a problem, just step right out here on this little outcropping here. And pick up this blue slug overlooking our base. All right, and then if we turn right around, back to the north, right over there, to kind of to our right-hand side, you're going to see another power slug right there back from the way we came you may have passed it on the way up here actually so you might have already gotten it but if not we're gonna head over and get him now and there we go now we got him now there is one more slug we can kind of grab here he's right over there on those trees right over there so we can just kind of drop down a little bit right over here and just be careful not to drop too far And then we can kind of cross the path over here, and we're just going to make our way up the side of this cliff and get up there to grab this next one. All right, and then once you're up here, just kind of head up here to the trees. Now, you see mine is actually floating kind of in midair. That's because I actually sawed down the tree for wood once before to get the biomass. But, uh, so there's no tree here, but I left a slug so I can kind of show you where he's at. All right, and once you grab that slug, we're just going to head right back over to our main base now. All right, go ahead and take all your slugs over here to our workbench. And go into that, and then we're just going to change all of those over to power shards. So it looks like I have three power shards on me currently, and I have 11 slugs. That's more than enough for what we're going to need. So let's go ahead and just make all these into the shards. All right, and once you've done that, we also have a yellow power slug on us as well. So we can come over here to the MAM. We can go over here down here to power slugs, and we should be able to actually 
Now research the yellow power shard. We have one yellow power shard, we have 25 reinforced plates, and we have 100 cable. That should be easy. That will only take a couple seconds. And there we go. Now, now, if we have any extra yellow power slugs now, we can now turn those into power shards as well. You actually, let me go down here and I'll show you here. If you come back over here to the workshop, one blue slug equals one power shard. A yellow power slug will get you two power shards. Now there is a third slug. It is a purple one. They are rare, but they are actually worth five power shards. You have to find your first one and then go in here under power slugs and then research them. But once you do that, you will then be able to make any other further ones you find from there into five power shards after that. Pretty snazzy. Also, since I'm already here in the menu, I'm just going to go ahead and research slug scanning as well. All right, so what is slug scanning? Well, slug scanning is this. You can go over to your equipment workshop and you can make a hand scanner if you have it unlocked. And from there, you can equip that. And as you have it in your hand, it kind of alerts you to nearby slugs. Uh, you can also use it to find like other things as well. Um, won't really get into that too much today though. I honestly, I don't use it a whole lot, but it is quite handy, especially if you're looking for slugs. The big question is how handy is that going to be once update 6 comes out? We will have to wait and see. Alright, so now after doing all this work of gathering up all of the slugs and everything else we've done, we are ending the end game of this video which is getting our production line smoother and more efficient. So what I like to do when it comes to overclocking is to work the issue backwards. It's, it's technically a math problem so to solve the end game we have to know what we actually are going to need. So if we come down here to the very end, to the machine that is making the modular frames, we know that we need three reinforced iron plates per minute and 12 iron rods. Okay, now we have another machine that is also taking the reinforced plates, and that is this one here that is making the smart plates. We know that it needs two. So two plus three is five. So we know five reinforced iron plates is what we are going to need total. And again, let me just kind of check on this one, 12 iron rods per minute. So five and 12, all right? So we head down here. This should be the machine making the reinforced iron plates right here. Yes, it is. All right, we know that we are going to need 30 screws per minute on this one. So come down here to this one we know that we need 50 screws per minute and this thing is only pumping out let's see 2.5 but we need five so we have this at like half so let's pump this up to full and let's see if this is going to be making five i think it will once it finishes the first one yes okay so at a hundred percent a reinforced iron plate assembler is going to make five reinforced arm plates per minute exactly the number that we're going to need to reinforce arm plates but it needs 60 screws now all right so now we're up to let's see 50 and 60 is 110 so we know that we need 110 screws total and then we need 12 plus uh how many iron rods was down here ah here we go if we look at the rotors uh 10 so 12 and 10 22 all right so 22 iron rods is what we're going to need along with 110 screws and we all know that it takes the iron rods to make the screws so we have to kind of do the math from down there now too so what i'm going to do is head down here to this miner right here this is the miner that's bringing in all of the ore that's going into this side down here which is then running from here into the last machine designer that are making the iron rods. So what we're going to do is we are going to go over here to this miner. We're going to take one of our power shards, put it into one of these. Now currently we are making 60 of the ore per minute, but if we turn it up by one, now we are making 90 per minute, but we are still on a Mark one belt, which only does 60. So one of the first things we're going to, have to do here, is kind of uh, upgrade this so we'll hit the mark II conveyor belt and just kind of hover over it and we can just upgrade that just like that but we got to do each section so we will just kind of take care of this here 
All right, upgrade that piece, upgrade that piece, upgrade that piece, that one, and this one going into this miner, and we'll go ahead and get that one too. So that miner feeds coming through here, and then it's going to the splitter and splitting into these two machines here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to this miner here all the way on the left hand side. We're going to throw a one of the uh, uh, power shards into this one. All right. And now we need 45 per minute, which isn't a problem because we are making 90 ore per minute split by two into 45. Now this one's of course has not been upgraded. It's still using the same amount. It's just using 30. And this one's getting some extra, which that's completely fine for the moment. If you want, you can go ahead and upgrade this one uh, later after we finish these. All right, so now we are making 45 iron ingots per minute. And we follow the line down through here. And we can leave this as a Mark 1. That's fine because the Mark 1 can support 60 per minute. And we're not using that much. So let's come all the way down here to the end to the very last machine down here. Let's take a look at this one. We are making 15 iron rods per minute in each of these machines. Two machines times 15 is 30. All right, well, we do need 22 iron rods up above, so that's more than enough, you would think, right? Well, just in case you may have forgotten, iron rods are going into these machines here in order to make the screws. So we need 110 screws, and right now we are making 40, we're making 80 screws per minute, but we need 110. All right, so we're going to need a lot more iron rods. All right, so we're going to take and we're going to upgrade both of these machines right here with a power shard. So let's go ahead and do that like that and this one into that one. All right, and that is taking 22.5, which is 45 iron ingots divided into these two. So 22.5, 22.5, that's 45 ingots coming down the line. Uh, we're using all of the ingots that we are producing from the 90 ore and then going into the smelter and then producing 45 ingots and then into these two. So hopefully you guys are following the math so far. All right, now at this point we are making 22.5 iron rods per minute in each one of these. That is a total of 45 iron rods. All right, so if we come over here to our two machines making screws, 10 screws makes 40, or 10 iron rods make 40 screws per minute. So we're gonna upgrade this one as well. And there we go. Now we are making 60 screws per minute. That's a little bit too much. So what we wanna do, we want to make 110, right? So which is about 55. So let's say 55 per minute. We can just go right down here, click on that. And then once we get down there, we can just delete those and then type in 55 and hit enter. That's 137.5% clock speed. So we're not using the full clock speed that we are going to be using completely, uh, which is cutting down on the power. Once update six comes out, this may cut down on the power quite a bit because of the way that they do the power consumption right now at the moment. And that is going to change in update six. But for the time being, um, just even underclocking this is going to not use as much power as completely and we're only going to need 13.75 per minute in the iron rods but we're making 55 per minute and we change the same thing onto this one over here if we do a hundred and well let's see we put our shard in there first and we know it's a hundred and thirty seven point five percent so we just do that now, that is 110 screws per minute, which is exactly the number of screws we need up top. And we are using a total of, let's see, 13.75 per minute on iron rods. Okay, so let me do the math on that real quick. 13.75 times two, and that equals 27.5. But we also need 22 up top, so plus 22, is equal to 49.5. So we're still not making as many rods as we really need, but this still kind of does better. So what these two machines are gonna be doing is taking as many iron rods as they need off of here, and any excess, which is close to the 22 that we need, are going up the line to the top. So let's head up there to our machines up here now. All right, so up here, back up top again, let's take a look at our machine here. So this is similar. 
It needs, we're getting all the screws we need, but we're not getting all the iron rods we need right now at the moment. And we're only running at 63%. Not quite 100%, but it's getting there. And then, of course, this one over here, this is getting everything it needs. It's getting the 30 per minute that it needs of the iron plates, and it's getting the 60 per minute of the screws. So it's running at 100%. So this one is solved. We've solved the problem with the screws. We just are not making enough iron rods which is causing these machines to not be as effective so these are at 60 percent and again we really just kind of need more rods so i would say since we have more ore going into this one than this one because this one isn't overclocked right now what if we went ahead and overclocked this one one more like so all right now that is making 60 ingots per minute and then if we come down here to these down here and we take a look at our two rod machines down here, let's go ahead and pump those up one more as well. So let's do that one. All right. So we have 60 per minute that we can use. And that is making 30 iron rods per minute there. And then we come over here and we do the same thing on this one. There we go. 30 iron rods. And 30 divided by 2. Or 30 times 2 is 60 using all the 60. So yes. All right. So now these two machines are working and producing 60 iron rods per minute. And out of that 60, we have our screws over here that are only using, uh, well, let's see, 13.75 times 2. Again, uh, if we bring our back up our min window we were using for math, we really only need like 49.5. So we're making a lot more iron rods at this point as you can see this is actually doing quite well right now and then these are getting sent up above so now at this point our machines above us our assemblers not the constructors but the assemblers should be working just fine all right just kind of checking on this one right now and it is doing 69 percent but it is getting better as you can see it just jumped up to 72 percent 73 percent right around in that area so eventually i think these two will become 100 percent and that cost us a total of let me think here let's see we used let me just count up how many shards we use for this all right so i just calculated that up and we are using nine shards on this side alone to get everything working more efficiently so looking at how many shards i have left in my inventory we only have five shards left uh, I honestly wasn't thinking about redoing a couple of these with an extra shard. But, uh, yeah, what I would say is just kind of go out, find a few more shards, because I only have five left. And what we want to do at this point is do the exact same thing we did on this side, down this side. And we can start by, of course, just running down through here. Starting at this miner right here, and then throwing one shard in that. There we go. Coming down here. And then just put one in each of these machines. So one in this one. There we go. And that's going to be making more iron ingots. And then just head down here to our last two machines down here, which are making the iron rods. And put one in there. And upgrade that. And then put one in this one down over here. There we go. Upgrade that. Okay. And uh, we don't have enough left over to do the rest of it but again just kind of go out explore find some more of those slugs and uh, get to work in fact if you're looking for a quick two and you haven't already gotten it yet now that we have unlocked the yellow slug what we can just do is just jump over here right into this gas we just use as much time as possible and jump back out and we are good now we have a slug a yellow one that we can get two shards out of Still not quite all we need to finish those up, but I have faith that you guys can find a couple more out in the wild out in here just by exploring. And I recommend just going out, exploring around you. You'll never know what you're going to find and just get to learn the area around the main hub here that you have. And again, as I said in the very beginning of this video, I also recommend opening up a new save game starting and just playing on your own. Try a different area explore see how things work on your own 
just remember some of the tips and tricks that I have taught you and you should be fine, honestly, and you'll probably learn more about it than just following everything that I'm telling you to do exactly. Um, you, you learn by doing, at least I always have, uh, so hopefully I've taught you guys enough to kind of get you going. Now we're not finished, of course, with this series. Next episode, now that we actually are getting the pieces we need, we can actually go ahead in here, go over to our machine, go into tier three, and we're gonna do basic steel production. All I need uh, to finish this off is some wire, but I'm just gonna go ahead and select that milestone and just throw what we need in there, finish off that wire, push the button, and then we're gonna get basic steel production ready to go for the next episode. All right, so that is going to do it for this episode of How to Satisfactory. Hopefully I'm leaving you guys with a better understanding of the math behind overclocking, underclocking, things of that nature. If you have any questions at all, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I will be happy to try my best to answer them for you. Uh, also, I love to hear your comments about you know the feedback on the videos. There's things you don't like, things you do. Uh, I'm still getting a ton of feedback from my early videos about jumping around. I have hopefully been doing better on that and not doing that so much. So, yeah. I uh, don't really have anything else to add to that. So, Again, hope these videos are helping everyone and go out, adventure, and start a new save game, learn some things on your own, and just kind of explore. I highly recommend just, just explore the game, have fun with it. That's the big important thing. It's really the important thing of playing any game. With that being said, I am heading out of here. Wherever you guys are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Thank you for watching. Thank you for making my channel the success that it is so far uh, with much more to come soon. All right, I'm just going to do it. I will see you guys in the next video.